It's the Rugby Pass Fan Zone Lions Edition, live from London, with Scotland's Jim Hamilton, England's Andy Goo, Ireland and Lions' Stephen Ferris. Wales and Lions, Jamie Roberts. And you, the fans. Thirty-six, that's the number that Ian Foster has stuck with for his squad, but there are a couple of extras too, I will explain. To the engine room first, four hookers and six props, but after a barnstorming debut, including two tries, hooker Samasoni Tokiahu isn't named, but will remain in camp, as will George Barr, the experienced Joe Moody and Ofotuanga Fassi returning to the propping department. No room for Southland's Ethan de Groot. 125 test veteran Sam Whitelock will captain the side in Sam Kane's absence, as he continues to recover from chest surgery. Seven Lucy's named, Crusader Ethan Blackadder retained. To the backs and creating most of the chat, TJ Perinara. He returns to the squad after a stint in Japan and a public dalliance with League One. We now know that Fozzie wasn't that happy with. He's joined by Smith and Webber. No room for Finlay Christie. A testament to the depth we have at halfback, but the Blues number nine will also stay on in camp as temporary cover. No surprises at first five. It's hard to my to Braden Enor, who's back in the midfield after recovering from surgery for appendicitis. Quintu Pyre also staying put. How good are the outside backs looking? Half of them Crusaders. Expect to see a few of these names playing locally. The All Black management wanting Enor Moody and Tonga Farsi to play NPC footy. And Pitanara got to get match fit, but TJ reckons he's ready to go now. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm in a really good condition. Um, I'm looking forward to, to playing uh, some big minutes and uh, to experiencing uh, that level of footy uh, again. I know I'm not naive to the fact that it is different though, um, that I have been playing um, some awesome club footy um, lately, coming from Japan, playing um, in a league that's still really, really tough, but a different sort of tough. Uh, certainly the biggest talking point out of this squad selection. I don't think there are too many surprises. The fact it was always going to be difficult for some of those players to hold out the likes of a returning Joe Moody off of Tuanga Farsi. But JK, look, this opportunity that TJ Piranara has been given, look, he wasn't contracted. He got contracted after his, it finished with Japan. He's come back to New Zealand for club games. He's now back in the All Blacks. Is that contentious for you? Yeah, and it's got nothing to do with TJ Piranara. I think he's an outstanding player. Um, but we're picking him on now last year's form and he's coming back from Japan. He looked really light in the, in the photos I've just seen. And so why have we retained Christy? Well, it's probably injured. Well, at this stage, it looks as though he needs more game time to get himself match fit. They want to maybe get him back in the squad mills. I mean, the fact of the matter is he'll probably still have to prove some things at NPC level and inside the squad maybe before he gets a run. Well, absolutely he will have to. And I suppose the biggest thing would be the intensity. He looks like he's lost a lot of weight. So in, in terms of that, you know, how is that going to fare when you go to sort of the NPC level, C, C level? Because there's a couple of jumps up before you get to test match. So he will have to prove himself. But the, the coaches have obviously felt, you know, um, you know, their assessment of him that he warrants this. And I, when I look at someone like... like but, why don't you, but, but Mills, why don't you just name it the other way around? Well, that's what I was why don't you bring to TJ say? in, keep Christy in and say, we're going to see TJ play at the NPC level. I mean, he's played club footy. Or, well, I mean... Uh, I may be a dinosaur, but just bring him back in, give him a dumb club game to keep world rugby, you know, and then bring him in for this tournament. Or get him to play against the Māori. I don't understand now, because what happens, <clears throat> he's been named, and um, someone pulls his calf like Dane Coles did last week, and he's starting against Australia. Is he ready? Well, and that's going to be the challenge for TJ Perinara, is he's going to have to prove himself, right? I mean, that's the reality. Well, no, he's picked in the All Blacks. That's, yep. You prove yourself to get in the All Blacks. But I think also he's going to have to leapfrog, you know, someone like a, a Weber, you know? Yep. So, you know, in terms of that, he's, he's obviously the third. If he has to go back and prove himself in, in PC, So why are we keeping is, Christie? Well, well, I think, you know, Christie's there just in case, right? You know, you obviously have to so, name something in terms of the whole championship. You have to name a, a squad. Yeah, they so. feel it's there. If we break it down, right, if we're going to break it down, OK, yeah. I think Christie's had a fantastic, you know, he's last well. weeks. I think he... And when you look at stuff like that Ian Foster's talking about, the speed and things. He's done everything right. He brings something different different to the game. 
you know, this is a conversation that, that Ian Foster and the coaches have to have with this young man. You know, he's done everything right. OK, he's, he hasn't been selected, but they're obviously bringing someone else back in. OK, so what does that... In terms of the, your game analysis, OK, well, perhaps they're the same, similar sort of um, similar sort of way, but what does TJ bring that's going to be different, that's going to be beneficial to the, to the All Blacks, leading to the Breeders, though, and the Championship? It's probably his leadership. Look, look, he brings look, a vast look, amount look, of experience, look, though. Look, he brings a vast yeah, amount of experience okay, into look, the group. Look, this has got nothing to do with TJ Perinara. And your argument is completely on point. But what happened to the values of earning the jersey? Full stop for me. Nothing against, nothing against TJ. Your argument's correct. He's got all the experience and everything. But just keep Christy in there. Say TJ is our fourth, right? And he's going to play NPC. So they're all going to leave and play NPC. Is, is this for some rule that I don't know, is it? How do you mean? Well, are we naming all these players? Because... Well, essentially, there's a lot of guys who are coming back from injury. We've seen already guys who have come into the international yeah, I get that, environment. They've been playing here, right? What's that? They've been playing here. Yes, they They've have been, been playing part here. Of it. Yep, they have been part of it, and they'll and be no, going and, out. And 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 uh, Ritalik and Barrett did the same. Yep. and they were probably a little bit short of a gallop, right? And, but and that was Fiji. OK, taking a risk against Tonga and Fiji. Now we've got the championship. That's yep. what I'm saying. I'll repeat. TJ Perinara is good enough at this level, but we haven't seen him for a year. If, if you look at it like this, OK, Christy's still in there, and it's perhaps what the coaches might be thinking. TJ Perinara comes back, OK, he's the third. OK, TJ's the third, Christy's the fourth. Well, r realistically, they're both not going to play. So aren't you better having someone in there with his experience while he's getting himself up to speed and having Christy also challenge the fact that he might overtake, you know, TJ Perinara? So he probably certainly hasn't earned his spot. He might not play during the Championship or the, the Bledders, though, but I'd... I'd much rather prefer to have him as that leadership to grow the leadership group because I think that's probably an area that the All Blacks are, are possibly you know lacking a bit. You know, it's that, that emphasis of, of more guys in there to you might not necessarily play, but the, the value of the leadership within the environment, I, I think that holds you know great strength. For me, for me, I don't disagree, Mills. For me, it's just mixed messaging. That's all. I just don't get it. And like I said, it could be a dinosaur. My kids tell me I am. I'll have no comment on that, JK. Look, I spoke with Ian Foster today in Hamilton. I asked, with all the challenges of the last 18 months, has it started to feel this season is more like a typical All Black campaign? Yes, it does. You know, like it's because the things that we've planned uh, February, March, April, May are actually starting to happen. So, so that's nice. Um, we don't get too confident about that, though, do we? You know, like at the end of the day, it's... You know, we're just we're enjoying the moment and enjoying the tests that are in front of us. But uh, it is nice to actually have a plan and a program and, 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 and roll through it. So we're three test matches in. Does it seem to you that there seems to be, I suppose, a real synergy with this group? Has, has it come together quite quickly? Yeah, really delighted with the synergy. I mean, they're, they're a tight group. They've worked hard on that. And, um, and, and they're playing for each other. And, and there's a great sort of vibe amongst the squad. You know, like I, I made a comment that some of the skill work on stuff that we're doing is probably the best I've seen in terms of their own ownership and, and their desire to get better in the spaces. So delighted with the way they've been led, you know, by our leaders at the moment. Um, there's a great feeling, a great camaraderie, and that's kind of been one of our key focuses for, for the Steinlager series. But the same side is that it's, it is coming together. I think we've seen some nice steps and progress through the Steinlager series, but, but again, that's just the, the starting point for what's, what's to come. So you name a big squad. How do you balance that development of players against getting significant game time on an international stage? You know, it's not easy, and it's reasonably complex to get it right. And so again, we've just got to trust our instincts on that. But. Um, We've also got to bear in mind that we still live in a COVID world where there's a chance of people getting getting a cold or a bug later in the week, and and, and if that happens, then they get basically isolated and, and they can't play a game. So they've got those variables to deal with. Are you determined maybe this season to get your best combination a bit more time together in the Test arena? Oh, I think the Bledisloe is vital for us. You know, the Bledisloe Cup is not a is not a series that we go in with a rotation mindset. If you look at last year, we basically it's it's our key it's our key pinnacle event for the year really. And so we went into last year and became a massive focus. We after three games we we locked the cup away, and it was only after that that we started to say, okay, well now we need to reuse the next few games to to rotate and build a bit of a depth. This year we're a little bit further along. This last series we've learned a lot about a, a wider group, um, but now we want to get our performance right. And so 
you know, I'd, I'd expect a lot more continuity and selection through the Britazo Cup series. And but then, of course, my job is to look a little bit further ahead, and then we've got four in a row. So four weekends in a row will undoubtedly mean that we're going to have to change some combinations around. So it's a it's an eye for that part as well. So obviously TJ Peronara comes back into the environment. I mean, what gives you the confidence that he's going to be able to contribute sooner rather than later? Well, he's done it before. You know, he's been a, a key a key leader for us. Um, you know, he's played a lot of test matches. He. He went to Japan and, and we gave him a clear focus on, on focusing on the speed part of his game. Well, we've got a lot of faith in TJ defensively and, and how he plays. And if he can just keep that, that speed of service up, then, then there's no reason why he can't um, carry on playing at a top level for us. So, And as an athlete, he's competitive. We know he's fit. And so for him, it was a break that we kind of sensed that he probably needed. Um, talking to him, he's come back massively refreshed. And the other side of the corners, we've got a Finlay Christie who's taken his opportunity too. So again, we're building good options in that space. So you think about the nature of the professional game now, and we've got a number of players who are taking their financial sabbatical. Is that just something that's going to be a part of the future now? The fact you'll get to July and there will be players come back under your radar? Yeah, it seems to be, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it seems to be like on one side of the coin, you've got um, France and England and, and goodbye forever. Uh, versus an option of having a, a six-month stint in Japan and then coming back. I guess when you look at the theory of that, the, the Japan one looks really good for our top players. Um, the, the, the niggly parts are reintroduction, like how do you get them back in? And so, you know, and contractually, New Zealand rugby's got, got, a, got a policy around that. They have to play some domestic rugby before they come back in, and, and, and I agree with that. So is it, is it perfect for us? No, I'd love players to play here all the time. And... But, you know, in some ways it's, we've been able to use a, a necessary evil in some ways to get a long-term benefit, which is we are seeing guys um, use that, we're seeing experienced players use that as a chance to, to freshen up. And I guess there's something to do with a bank account, but it's also, we are seeing some long-term commitments to New Zealand after that, which has proven pretty beneficial.